ever since I've been driving a Honda engine, and there's really been a very, very sharp focus on uh, drivability and how the engine works in the car and how the engine works in conjunction of, uh, with the car and the setup and how the driver is driving. This drivability, what we call it, we always try to, to take into account the different scenario on the track. There are a lot of different ways to actually de describe drivability. Uh, there's drivability of upshifts, there's drivability of downshifts, there's drivability of the throttle as you're kind of just exiting the corner, there's drivability as you're in the mid corner. Actually, when we've looked at classifying drivability, there's like over 20 different ways that you can actually describe the drivability of the engine. And the question is, which one do you focus on? We're always searching for what does the engine really need to do? You know, does it need this much power here? You know, uh, is the power delivery too picky? You know, what can we do to help the driver? We always think in terms of horsepower, but we, we have shifted this, this idea of horsepower. Although uh, as a motorist, you want to have always this engine of horsepower item. It also kind of depends on the nature of the racing and how much time you spend at wide open throttle. But, um, you know, peak power is probably our number one focus, but drivability is a close second. We take the mathematical uh, principles, we take the physical principles, we put a lot of Honda powder on it, <laughs> we took a lot of uh, experience from the different team members, and then we do a great engine. In the grand scheme of things, uh, nothing moves forward unless that number is bigger. So uh, if we've got a new piston, if we have a new port, uh, if we got a new cam, if it's not moving that dial further to the right, it's not going to make it out to the racetrack. Once the engine gets fitted in the car and is going around, there's a lot of different things that will influence the overall performance of the car. And uh, there are many things that the engine and its power delivery characteristics can influence, even on how you drive and how you set up the car. Yes, you have this base map, which has evolved off the dyno, but that's just you know, that, that's maybe 80% of the work. And if you've done a good job, it's 85% of the work. The final sort of 15, 20% is what's done here at the racetrack with the Honda technicians working in conjunction with the team, figuring out what it is that this particular driver, this particular racetrack requires. My responsibility is to set up the running calibration for the particular engine in, in the car. And there are two switches that offer eight positions each and um, each position is set to a, a different calibration, a, a map you might say, and we constantly monitor the engine's performance and the vital signs and sometimes we may ask to go to a different position based on the circumstances. There's a lot of work that goes on with the team engineers and with the drivers to really understand what they need from the engine. If we took all cool 12 of the Honda drivers or, or, or just the four within the Andretti team and we overlaid all their throttle traces for an identical lap they will all be different so every driver has a different style of, of how they use the throttle some of them are very progressive in the application of the throttle and other drivers are a little bit more digital different driving styles right <laughs> everyone has a different way to skin the cat there are guys that are late breakers you know and there are guys what we call point and squirt um, I mean, there are all sorts of different driving styles. Some drivers might be really, really smooth and steady with their throttle application. Um, other drivers might be a little more comfortable hanging the, the, the back end of the car out. The absolute perfect driver will understand exactly the best way to drive a particular corner uh, with a particular car and a particular engine, you know? And he will be constantly adapting uh, the way they drive to extract the absolute optimum. The very clever drivers are able to subtly modify the way they drive, but at the end of the day, we're dealing with human beings, and human beings are individuals, and they have different approaches under different situations. And uh, yes, in theory, it would be great to be able to treat the, the human being like a robot and uh, have them adapt to the engine, but I think the best result is when you meet in the middle. It is your job as a driver to find the optimum 
for that car, for that particular state of the track and the car and the engine and tires and so on and so forth. The driver does have a number of, um, we refer to them as map switches. Um, so on the steering wheel, he, he will have uh, the opportunity to adjust from say, what is referred to as best power um, through to a range of perhaps with this IndyCar engine, which has got, um, it's a turbocharged engine. So he can adjust perhaps trimming the boost a little bit if he's finding that uh, he's having boost penalties or things like that so he can back off the boost a little bit. He has fuel trim switches so he can uh, lean out the engine if necessary. If we're trying to hit a particular uh, fuel usage per lap target. Today you have an information overload, you know. Uh, you have mountains of data, you have a lot of uh, different options uh, from the, uh, all the electronic systems in the car. So now you really need to be able to deal with all that information. Sometimes you can go overboard and get yourself terribly confused, but there is no question, you know, that you can do a better job as a driver and as an engineer if you understand how to make the most out of the information that is available at your fingertips.